Good evening, YouTube. Though it may not be evening, I always say that. And I also always say, what the crap's going on? Welcome to another Air of Carthage video here. I don't know who else's video would be, but we're going to be testing some gyrocopters. I recently did a video where we used them as kind of dwarf and cavalry, and people brought up some good questions and points in the chat, and I was like, you know what? We should have a video where we test gyrocopters. So that's going to be the purpose of this video. Get ready, let's dive in. It is an order. Okay, so first, just to kick things off, let me tell you the different gyrocopter units we have, and I will give you what their own um, description says, and then we will go through the testing to see if their description is accurate, and to see if our preconceived notions are accurate. And I will tell you this by starting with my preconceived notions, and then let the testing show you. So we have essentially three gyrocopters, there's a fourth that is just a variant of uh, one here. So the standard gyrocopter um, is going to be a fast moving unit of three if you're on large unit settings. It's four if you're on the uh, ultra settings. Um, it's going to move at a speed of 105 very quick. Um, and there's no difference between these two lower end gyrocopters other than the type of ammunition, how much ammunition, the range and damage. Okay. So let's just run through these real quick. So again, they're all going to have the same armor, leadership. Um, gyro or the gyro bomber slows down a little bit. Gyrocopter has a steam gun. It's probably going to be similar to the gun on the steam tank, though I haven't tested those two specifically against each other to see, but it is a steam gun. I think one of the interesting things to point out about um, this particular gun and what it does is found here in the stats. There is a uh, base missile damage of 12. There's four armor piercing, which is very low. But then the explosive base damage is 37. <clears throat> and the explosive armor piercing damage is 8. Um, remember, this damage is shown as a value over 10 seconds, right? So this is damage over time. So the damage of this gun is really in its explosive damage, which means that we can expect that this one's probably good as an area of effect weapon. So we'll see how that works out. And they list it as anti-infantry. And I can see that because it lists the explosive damage. Now, as far as the traits go, magic resistance like any dwarf unit. And then it has gyrocopter bombs. There's two of them um, like the other gyrocopter counterpart. It's 700 gold for this unit. Um, the gyrocopter with brimstone gun. Again, same as the other. Same speed, same armor, everything else. It has 18 flaming ammunition, so it's flaming attacks, because it's shooting a brimstone gun, molten brimstone. Um, or brimstone, I guess, is molten rock, right? So in any case, uh, it has 100 range, so slightly longer range, and it's an armor-piercing damage. Notice here that there is no explosive damage, but this one has dedicated armor-piercing damage, 74, and missile damage, 24, reload time, 9.9 .9 seconds, right? So let's keep the reload times as we go in here as well. 8.1 seconds, so slightly quicker reload on the steam gun. All right, so this thing is going to do this damage over the 10-second time period. This one does not have the exploding damage, so we should expect that this one will be a better gun versus either monsters, monstrous infantry, or large targets. Now, a lot of times I've thought in my head that this one's also better versus armored infantry because of its armor piercing value. It's specifically listed as anti-large. We'll take a look. It has the same traits as the other copter, 25% magic resistance, and two gyrocopter bombs. The gyro bomber. Now, this one's where it gets interesting to me. This one is a little bit slower. Otherwise, um, it does have more weapon strength also since it's only one unit model. Um, I did not test any of the gyrocopters in melee by the way, on this video. This is a ranged test, and at the very end I do a little bit of a bombing test with the gyro bomber. This isn't complete exhaustive testing of gyrocopters, but it's going to give you a really solid idea of where they go. Anyway, so one key difference you'll notice here is we still have a gyro bomber, or we have a gyro bomber bomb, which means there's more of them. There's 11, um, so this one could be good. And then it can also fire whilst moving on top of its magic resistance. It's only one copter 
in the unit though, so keep that in mind. Now the missile damage looks insane. It says 1174 damage. I'm just like, what? Um, I don't know where that value comes from. And I don't really know how accurate it is. It feels like maybe there's an inaccuracy here because when you look at these stats here, I understand that that's the value over a 10 second period. Okay, it reloads every 4.5 seconds. There's eight shots per volley. So I guess, I guess you have to add up the eight shots times the damage here and then look at the reload time in order to come up with the DPS that it lists there of 1174. I haven't done all that math and I don't care to. Um, but if we look at what's underneath this gun, um, it has pretty solid armor piercing damage and it has a little bit of exploding damage. Not as much as the standard gyrocopter, but it's got some. So this gun has a, a little bit of explosion effect, but it's also got a pretty nice dedicated anti-armor component, and it reloads at about twice the rate of the gyrocopter with brimstone gun. So, but remember, there's only one of them firing, right? Only one. Um, so let's start jumping into some tests. Um, the Sky Hammer, I didn't test specifically, but you can see that it's um, going to be mostly the same it just reloads a little faster because of the uh, the nine chevrons that are on it. Uh, it still has its gyro gyro bomber bomb, uh, but this one drops more than one bomb at the same time, so it's going to be a lot more devastating. But again, we're not going to really focus on that one in the testing. Let's go jump in and let's start teaching you the things I learned. All right, here we are in the first test, and what I'm going to test here is against heavy infantry. I brought Swordmasters of Hoeth as kind of a proxy stand-in. Um, they're high armor. And I'm going to test all of my gyrocopter variants. I pulled them within range, and my goal was to get the gyrocopters within a, a good spot in their in their arc of fire. So you can see that everybody's well within range, which means that yes, they are staggered at slightly different distances, but they're all firing at an infantry unit of the same depth. And we want to see which which variant is most effective against heavy infantry. So if your purpose is to bring gyrocopters to hurt heavy infantry, which ones do you want to choose? On my far left here, we've got the copter with brimstone gun. In the middle, we've got the gyrocopter with the standard one with the steam gun. And on the right, we have the gyro bomber with its um, eight shot gun there. And you can see just how devastating all of that, um, <laughs> all of that explosive damage is. This is an armored unit, and this is not an anti-armor um, platform per se. And it is absolutely destroying the Swordmasters, and it's not even taking that much am ammo to do it. Now, keep in mind that I've, I've put my Swordmasters in a relatively blocky formation here. It probably wouldn't be quite as effective if they were spread out a little more, but I, again, I gave every Gyrocopter the same profile of target. And when you look at the amount of ammunition for the damage done, the standard Gyrocopter is really the winner here by a long shot. The Gyro Bomber is using a lot of ammunition to not all that much damage. The brimstone gun is causing significant damage, and this is the one that I would have thought would have been the winner here because of its armor piercing value, but it doesn't have the explosive value. So its projectiles connect with whatever it hits, and it does a lot of damage, um, but you can see that the steam gun is actually more effective here at killing the infantry. This one kind of caught up over time, the brimstone gun, but right off the bat, the steam gun caused more damage. So if you're only going to get a couple of volleys and you want to make your damage count, again, the standard gyrocopter with the steam gun is definitely the way to go on the pick here. Though you can see that both gyrocopters are going to be fairly effective at killing armored infantry. So what I would say here is the number one pick for uh, anti-heavy infantry duty should be the standard gyrocopter. The gyro bomber, could it bomb this heavy infantry? Yes. But just when it comes to shooting with the gun, no. Not the one you want to pick. It's used all of its ammo, only taken out about half of the Swordmaster, whereas the steam gun Still has quite a bit of its ammo. You can see the brimstone gun still working over here, using up even more of its ammo. So we picked up a chevron really quickly on the uh, standard gyrocopter. Just gives you an idea that it is definitely the best pick here. So let's check the next scenario. All right, the next test I want to give you is heavy cavalry. So I've chosen Reichsguard uh, because they represent heavy cavalry quite well. They're shielded. They have 120 armor, and they're going to put some of the uh, they're going to put some of the thoughts on these different gyrocopters to test in the sense that. You would think that the gyrocopter with brimstone gun would be the best performing here because of its specific targeted anti-large capability here with the anti-armor in, um, in its ammunition. So I've turned on the fire at will on all these units and we're going to fast forward and see who is the most effective. Again, gyrocopter brimstone gun on the left here as we're looking at them, gyrocopter in the middle and gyro bomber on the right. Let's fast forward and see how the damage unfolds. See what you all learn here. You'll notice that the um, the gyrocopter with brimstone gun jumped out to an early lead, 
but as the unit withers down, the gyro bomber actually starts to become pretty darn effective and even starts to outpace it. It's just that it runs out of ammo sooner. And then there's our there's the results there if we look at it. So this Reichsguard, only 12 units remaining. Uh, in fact, we can go to the uh, the end replay screen here so we can see how the kills turned out. So 15 kills on the gyrocopter, not very effective. Mm, it's not armor piercing, it's not meant to be anti-large, and even though it has the explosive attacks, it was not very effective versus heavy cavalry. This is not a huge surprise. The gyrocopter with brimstone gun got the most kills at 33, um, but the gyro bomber, pretty interesting performance there with 25 kills. I think the thing to keep in mind here is that the gyro bomber can fire whilst moving, and that might be another test in and of itself, but I mean, any, the, the standard gyrocopter, the brimstone gun, it can keep pace with cavalry, stop and fire, and then continue. The question would be whether or not the gyro bomber's fire whilst moving um, would allow it to do more damage to a moving cavalry target. I haven't specifically tested that here, but you might want to go check that one out for yourself, see how it works out. But the brimstone gun becomes the pretty expected king of the fight against heavy cavalry. The next um, group of targets that I wanted to test on would be a mid-armored monster. So an armor with or a monster with decent armor, but not super high. Um, just kind of as a baseline here. So how do the different gyrocopter variants perform against this Hydra? Again, the Hydra is going to be sitting still, but this is not a terribly unfeasible scenario. The Hydra could be attacking infantry and be mostly still um, while your gyrocopters do their work. So let's just see how it pans out. Right off the bat, the gyro bomber picks up some nice damage. Again, the layout. Brimstone gun on the left, standard in the center, gyro bomber on the right as you're looking at it. That's going to be my standard layout. Let's fast forward and see who does what kind of damage. Now, do keep in mind that the Hydra regenerates. So when one of them runs out of ammo, it will start to regenerate. So we'll probably pause it when one runs out of ammo and take a look. So like right here, we ran out of ammo, took it down to 3770 health. So a little over half damage from the standard gyro bomber. And let's keep going. Brimstone gun's about to run shy of ammo. Just did 4512 health. So it looks like against a single monster. Now, keep in mind, though, there's a huge cost difference between the gyro bomber and the gyro, uh, gyro copter with brimstone gun. Um, there's a cost difference of 350. Okay, so does it make this one more effective? Uh, I mean, this one got a chevron over a chevron. This one did not. Um, you think about the damage that this brimstone gun did and saved you another 350. You, the gyro copter with brimstone gun is probably better, but if, it just, if you're just looking at sheer damage dealt, then the gyro bomber is going to have dealt more sheer damage with its gun there against this particular monster, whereas the uh, the steam gun is completely worthless. The Hydra shrugged off all the damage and healed it. So I would say this one's kind of a toss-up. Um, if your objective is to bomb an infantry line, the gyro bomber could be a good pick if you also expect a monster. Um, if you're looking for a more rounded pick, the gyrocopter with brimstone gun is cheaper will do good damage still, and in multiples, they could probably do considerable damage at less cost, obviously, than if you were trying to run multiples on the gyro bomber. So, there you go. Let's check out the next scenario. This test is going to be against a higher armor monster, in this case a dragon. It's higher armor. I've picked this black dragon. It's not crazy high armor at over 100, um, but it's a flying unit too, and I wanted to have one test against flying units, so we're going to set it up. Again, standard layout, brimstone, steam gun, bomber. Let's hit fast forward and see how they stack up against these uh, black dragons. So remember, the gyro bomber is slower in this case, so you're going to have to consider that. It costs more and it's slower. Again, as we see, when it just comes to pure damage dealt, the gyro bomber actually still deals the most damage, but it's the most expensive unit. You probably couldn't bring it in multiples, and a dragon can absolutely keep pace with it. This is 90 speed versus 90 speed. The brimstone gun's 105 speed versus 90, which means that a pack of gyro bombers, or sorry, gyrocopters with brimstone guns can kite this dragon, whereas the gyro bomber cannot. Your bomber would have to be kept at a safe distance and take shots at the dragon over time, who would also be moving. So, I mean, it's an interesting result to see that just in sheer damage, the gyro bomber deals it faster and armor piercing damage, but at the lower cost, the gyrocopter with brimstone gun still does respectable damage and has the higher speed so it can stay in front of an enemy whereas the steam gun is just again worthless against a large armored target so another interesting one your gyro bomber here has potential to be a um, multifaceted unit and then the uh, gyro bomber with, or sorry gyrocopter with the brimstone gun 
I think that really it just displays its potential to be a pack hunter in this situation. The next test is up against monstrous infantry, and I started off with a low armor variant, these Cryptors. Um, this test will be a little bit skewed though for one reason, and I'll go ahead and explain that to you. The Gyrocopter with Brimstone gun over here has flaming attacks, and Cryptors are weak to flaming attacks because of their regeneration trait. Um, so this one will skew slightly um, to the Brimstone gun because of its ammunition. But let's just see. Again, I wanted a low armor, monstrous infantry. I guess I could have picked a troll. But it also has regeneration, and I think it's also weak to fire. Um, so, But I just wanted to see what happens when you're up against monstrous infantry, because this is another common unit on the battlefield that comes stacked up against the dwarves. And as we just kind of look at the damage being done, even with its bonus uh, coming from the fire damage, um, barely keeping a pace of the gyro bomber, who does respectable damage. But you can see there's 7 of 12 units left, whereas the gyrocopter the brimstone gun is actually killing more unit models. It killed one more unit model, and it has a little bit of ammo left. So when it just comes to the uh, the total damage done to the unit, the gyrocopter, the brimstone gun being pretty effective here. And you can see it just dropped another unit model. Um, it's still set, yeah, so down to four unit models there, and it still has one volley left. So in this case, again, it does have the flaming attacks. So bear that in mind, but I don't know, just right off the bat, I can't think of another low armor monstrous infantry that doesn't have the regenerate trait. So this may just be, it is what it is. Um, so these Cryptors come all the way down to three unit models. These ones still have seven. The Steam Gun does a lot better in this case, doing 50% of the damage, uh, but only killing three unit models. But that's because of the low armor. It just shows that the Steam Gun is not going to be good against hardly anything besides infantry. It's really the anti-infantry gyrocopter and not much else. All right, so a similar test here, except this is going to be monstrous infantry with high armor. All right, so this one will specifically show high armor. The interesting thing here is Croxagores are not weak to flaming damage. So this will give us an interesting peek between the gyro bomber and the gyrocopter with brimstone gun. Let's fast forward and see how the damage unfolds. So as we watch here, the Croxagor is taking a lot of damage from both the gyro bomber and the gyrocopter with brimstone gun. As expected, the steam gun is relatively ineffectual versus the Croxagores who have the very high armor. As the uh, gyro bomber finishes its uh, volleys here, five Croxagores left, 1981 health left. The brimstone gun already has um, the Croxagores drop down to six unit models. And it's still got another volley, so it looks like the, uh, the gyro bomber here might end up being more effective versus these in terms of just the sheer damage dealt to the unit. Yep, so six unit models still standing. They didn't drop. This could change a little bit from test to test. The steam gun only dropping a single unit model unless it gets one in this last volley. Nope. So it only dropped a single unit model. So again, interesting performance, but if I look at the cost difference between the brimstone gun and the gyro bomber, uh, the brimstone gun is more effective here just in terms of total cost for damage dealt. Um, I mean, it dealt uh, 500 less damage, but it cost 300 less gold. So I still feel like this proving that the Gyro Bomber can do great damage versus large targets, but the Gyro Copter with Brimstone Gun is going to be your go-to if you're specifically looking to counter something like this. The Gyro Bomber, I think, should be there in case it's like, hey, I bring it to Bomb Infantry specifically because that's its role, but it has the side effect of being good against certain armored targets, right? That's the side effect. So if you can keep it safe, it can accomplish that secondary mission and it's showing that it's quite effective at that. This test is gonna be against a low armor lord on foot. So I picked a master necromancer to represent that there's quite a few lords out there that are spell casters that will have low armor and you'll see them on foot fairly often. And, then, and the point of this next series of tests is to see, do the gyrocopters have any specific capability to snipe out lords of this fashion? So if you're playing against a faction where you expect a Sorcerer Lord pick, so low armor, on foot, can your gyrocopters hunt them down and assassinate them? Let's just see what happens here. This is the steam gun variant, so it's good against low armor, but you'll see that its, it's damage is really explosive damage, and it's not terribly accurate dropping every single shot on this Necromancer. So over time, they end up doing a fair bit of damage, but it's not effective as a Lord sniping unit. So let's see how the other two gyrocopters do. This time we're going to test the Brimstone Gun. I'll let you see how cool this looks, by the way, too. So here's the Necromancer facing off against the Gyrocopter with the Brimstone Gun. Um, so the point of this test, again, remember the uh, the Brimstone Gun doesn't have the explosive damage, and you can see that it's a more targeted projectile, and when it hits, 
It's doing tremendous damage to the uh, Master Necromancer. And quite easily here, again, this is against a target that's not moving, so you can expect that this would take a little longer and be a little more difficult and more use of ammo in a fight. Um, but the Gyrocopter, the Brimstone Gun, is perfectly capable of Lord Sniping um, something like this Necromancer, right? So, a Spellcaster. It did very good at it, in fact. Very good at it. So, interesting use for the Gyrocopter there. It gives the Dwarves mobility and the ability to go out and pick off an enemy Lord who may have been too cocky to bring a mount and move around quickly because they are up against the Dwarves and they think, eh... I'll bring a Lord on foot, that way he's not as vulnerable to artillery, and what are the Dwarves going to do about it anyway, because it's not like they can catch up with my Lord on foot anyway. So the last test against the Necromancer here is going to be our Gyro Bomber. I actually kind of expect similar results to the Brimstone Gun, but let's see if that's the case, because you can see the 8-shot volleys coming out of that gun are not perfectly accurate, so let's see how it works. At first the damage wasn't great, but you can see here that the damage starts to mount pretty quickly. Um, for the gyro bomber and it ends up being fairly effective at killing this lord again remember the lord standing still i didn't get a test a chance or a chance to test all these while they're moving but again the gyro bomber here was perfectly capable of executing an enemy lord in terms of just the damage that it deals so if your objective was to bomb a bunch of infantry that gyro bomber might serve the secondary purpose of taking out that spellcaster lord as well I, in this next series of tests, I've picked a mounted lord, um, so they'll have a mount and they'll be high armor. So in this case, Carl Franz. Um, so he's going to have high armor. The, the steam gun's not going to do anything. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and run the test here for you. Um, so, but I tested it anyway, just to make sure there wasn't something hidden in the writing here that we missed. Uh, but yeah, steam gun not going to be effective. The purpose of this was we had a lord on foot with low armor. We have a lord who's mounted with high armor. Would this lord be standing still and just eating this? No. Not likely, but could they get tied up in combat with your dwarves held still while you shoot them? Yes, they absolutely could. Um, otherwise, again, remember this is a test against a unit that's not moving. Let's see how the brimstone gun does. All right, so here's the brimstone gun test. Right off the bat, you can see it does more damage as expected on the first volley. Remember, the armor piercing value here is going to be a big deal. And if a target is standing still or being mostly still, the Brimstone Gun is going to end up causing a lot of damage, so is it capable of sniping an Armored Lord? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Uh, now, Karl Franz doesn't have a ton of hit points. This would be a little more difficult if you had a big Lord that was mounted like Mazda Mundi on Zlock, um, or something like that, right? It's going to take a little longer, and it's going to take more ammo because they have just so many hit points. Same thing with a Mammoth or something else like that. Of course, the Mammoth doesn't have a ton of armor. But yeah, the Brimstone Gun, still a capable Lord Assassin at this level. So I'm going to do another test. Um, this time we're going to take a look at enemy artillery and how effective gyrocopters can be versus the artillery. Eh, you didn't test the gyro bomber versus Franz. Yeah, the results probably would have been similar. So yeah, I didn't waste my time on it. Um, but in any case, how about whenever gyrocopters go after enemy artillery? Let's say you bring your own artillery and the enemy has also brought artillery. Can gyrocopters be combined with your artillery to give you a mobile um, harassment force that's also good at killing enemy artillery so that you can win that artillery duel? So I have the three different types of gyros. Again, brimstone uh, as we're facing them. Uh, actually, here we'll do it this way because now it'll be right. Brimstone on the left, gyro in the middle, and the gyro bomber on the right. And we're going to open fire on these empire mortars. And we'll see which unit is the most effective right off the bat. Look at that steam gun. So because an artillery crew has kind of a blob of infantry at the back of it, the steam gun is going to end up being insanely effective. Artillery crews are pretty much going to be stationary anytime you're firing at them. Look at that, two volleys and a mortar is off the battlefield. So this is an interesting use for the gyrocopter with the steam gun here. It has just murdered in three volleys a mortar unit that's not coming back to the field. So keep this in mind when picking gyrocopters and what you think their potential use might be. If you expect artillery from your enemy, this could be a very good pick. I'm not aware of any artillery units that carry high armor. And even if they did, you remember what these gyrocopters did to the Swordmasters? They did a lot of damage. Now, in terms of the second prize here, it appears that the gyrocopter with brimstone gun picks up a nice second, getting rid of its artillery crew relatively quick. Whereas the gyro bomber's more focused gun, even though it fires relatively rapid, it's killing artillery crew, but it's just not dealing the damage like these other ones have. So if you come bring your gyrocopter over enemy artillery and park it to do the damage, um, steam gun is going to be king. 
So that's another use. So steam gun is anti-infantry, anti-artillery. Brimstone gun is going to be anti-cavalry, anti-monster, anti-lord. The gyrocop bomber can be similar. Anti-cavalry, anti-lord. But it's also got bombs. Speaking of bombs, let's go take a look at how to be effective with your gyro bomber when it comes to bombing. I've set up a scenario here with four swordsman units just packed right on top of each other to create an ideal bombing test. Um, so if you were to ever create a blob, this is your ideal scenario where you get several units blobbed on top of each other and your bomber can come in to take care of business. Now one thing you'll see, um, sometimes players get in a hurry, they see a blob like this, they come in and they'll just drop all their bombs, sorry, uh, right here in the middle of the blob like that. And that's what I'm going to do in this test. I'm going to drop every single bomb in the same spot to show you how effective it is. Now one stupid thing is gyro bombers don't get the kills from their bombs. So any kills that are that are because of the bomb dropping, CA please, please fix this crap. So you're not going to be able to see how many kills you get. Now look, the bomber made a big hole in the center of the swordsman. So yeah. If you drop another bomb in it, which I'm about to demonstrate, I was waiting to see if they would reform, and they're just not reforming. So I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to stay parked in this one spot, and I'm going to just start dropping more bombs into the hole. You can see that a few of the guys may have just kind of inched around a little bit, but for the most part, as long as the gyrocopter's parked there, that unit's not reforming. At least not very quickly. You can see them still just inching around a little bit. Let's fast forward. There, they finally kind of came back together, but see, as soon as I drop another bomb... It creates a big hole. If I keep dropping bombs, the hole gets even bigger. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to drop all the bombs here. You're one of those players. You get parked over an infantry blob. You get really excited. You just start clicking that bomb button and you just let it loose. Is it effective? And the answer is no. You've done pretty minimal damage to these swordsmen. Yeah, you've killed maybe a hundred or so. But for the most part, these swordsmen are still very much alive. And your expensive gyro bomber couldn't even take out these four units of swordsmen in this method. So... What I'm trying to say is don't drop all your bombs in the same spot. Now watch this, this is interesting. As soon as I move the gyrocopter away from the sword units, watch what happens. Let's see what happens here. See that? As soon as the gyrocopter moved away, they all reformed. When it was parked over the top of them, they wouldn't do it. So, how should you take advantage of that? Here I'm going to show you a more effective way to use those gyro bombs. Now this can be used against a blob, it can also be used against an infantry line where you can fly straight down a big infantry line fight, dropping bombs, but in this case I'm going to show you that as you pass through, you can drop a bomb into the middle of a blob. Now remember there is a slight delay on your bomb dropping, but if you give your gyrocopter orders to keep it moving around, you can more effectively hit different pieces of the blob where the hole is not. And if you move your gyrocopter far enough away from the blob and take enough time, the blob will start to reform. See that? Because I'm not parked over the top of them, I can then swing back by, boom, drop another bomb. So now look at the damage being done here as I'm bombing this, uh, this uh, infantry line. And again, as the gyrocopter moves and comes in and out, it gives you a chance to let the enemy infantry reform. It requires you to move just a little bit further away if you want to make them reform. See when I get a little bit further away like that? and then turn around, the infantry will reform, and I can come back by and get a more effective bombing run. So again, don't just drop all your bombs at once. Keep your gyro uh, bomber moving. This probably helps keep it safer anyway. You can even get two bombs if you time it right. So see that where I came across and was able to drop two bombs. And I'm going to come back across the back line of it here, drop another one. Actually, it doesn't look like I had the right angle there, so I waited. But yeah, you get 11 bombs on this... Uh, on this gyro bomber, so make them count is what I'm saying here. Just look at the damage on the swordsman this time versus last time. Again, it's not going to show the kills, which is irritating, but it'll still just show you the amount of damage that can be done here. So that's how you properly use a gyro bomber. Back and forth, back and forth. Keep moving so that the infantry reforms. And I didn't actually count up all the bombs there, uh, but it looks like I still have one bomb hanging from the bomber, so I did that in 10 bombs, defeated all four infantry units. Um, this is going to be, a, again, effective versus a line of infantry or against a blob of infantry. There's different ways to create both of those. You can create a blob of infantry with a ethereal rune lord or rune smith, or sorry, an ethereal rune smith or an ethereal thane um, with the clan uh, Angren, for instance, or you could use a really tough unit like Ungram who is unbreakable. You could put him out there and use him to create a blob. 
Or you could use a line of Iron Breakers or Miners with Blasting Charges, for instance, to get the enemy all blobbed up against you in one line um, where they charge at you, and then you could fly across that line, dropping bombs. So there's a couple of ways to be effective with them. That's pretty much all the testing that I've done for now, so let's just kind of recap the lessons learned here, okay? So I'm going to jump back over into the custom battle, talk a little bit about each copter. So Gyrocopter, the standard version with the steam gun, where does it shine? Against infantry, both armored and unarmored, okay? Use this thing against infantry. Its secondary use is against artillery, and kind of the third use you get out of it is make sure you drop its two bombs on the infantry and use the same principles that I just taught you with the gyro bomber to do that. Don't drop both of your bombs in the exact same spot. Move around a little, make it effective, okay? Dropping them against engaged infantry later in the battle is usually a good idea. So early in the battle, use this thing to cause damage to key enemy infantry units or artillery units and then drop your bombs during the fight. The gyro uh, copter with brimstone gun, use this thing to harass enemy heavy cavalry. Uh, probably light cavalry too, but I'd say heavy cavalry is where you're going to get more of your bang for buck. Use it to harass monsters, use it to snipe lords. That's going to be the use for the gyrocopter with the brimstone gun, and its secondary purpose then would be to bring in that bomb and drop it on an infantry fight as the infantry are blobbed up or fighting or fixed in position. The gyro bomber is an interesting one. It costs more. When should I pick the gyro bomber versus the gyrocopter? I think you pick the gyro bomber when you expect a bigger infantry blob against your forces. I would otherwise pick a pack of gyrocopters with brimstone guns and save money on gyro bombers because they're expensive, they're harder to protect, and they're slower. Okay? These guys are faster, more nimble, they can split up, they can kite enemy units, um, so that's going to be the difference. But if you expect a lot of infantry and you don't expect a lot of challenge up in the air, so maybe you're coming up against greenskins, you don't expect an Azag, but you expect a lot of infantry. A gyro bomber could be a good pick, and its secondary purpose could be to help snipe an enemy lord, or an Arachnorok spider, or something else like that, where this unit does pretty darn good armor piercing damage versus large targets. So I would keep that in mind. It's not going to be very effective against artillery unless your gyro bomb does damage to an artillery unit. So. Anyway, that's the summation of gyrocopters. Hopefully this has taught you something and taught you how to more effectively use gyrocopters so that you can now pick armies with the dwarves where you get some synergy. So again, maybe you're expecting an anti, uh, you need to do work against infantry. Maybe you pick a Thorgrim Grudgebearer, for instance, and he's got these abilities that buff the melee attack and stuff of your dwarves. So maybe you pick a Thorgrim and you get a couple of gyrocopters with steam guns. And then maybe you throw in a cannon because you expect your enemy might have artillery, right? So you can see how you start to synergize these things. Enemy artillery has to deal with a cannon at the same time your gyrocopters could move forward, or you could, like, mix it up. So you could do something like this. You could take one steam gun and then two brimstone guns. So now I can go out, harass enemy cavalry, harass an enemy lord, and go harass their artillery, all while my artillery is firing. And then in the background, I could keep, like, you know, a line of infantry, whatever that infantry is you pick. You pick your infantry line, and you can sit back now, Thorgrim can buff the stats of your infantry, so they're going to fight harder and tougher. And then your artillery and gyrocopters can go out and harass enemy large and give you mobility so that your defensive position with your cannons now has a better fighting chance. It'll force the enemy forward because you're out harassing them. And your artillery will be able to fire while their artillery will be harassed by gyrocopters and their cavalry is being harassed by gyrocopters. You know, So this just gives you an, a way to be effective. So you got to think about the synergies that you can put together with these different units. Again, do I use Ungram to create a blob, for instance, because he's unbreakable? Do I go create a blob of infantry with Ungram and then pound it with gyrocopters with the steam gun? Do I use Ungram to lure in an enemy uh, monster or something and then, and then hit it with brimstone guns? So again, you can think through the different possibilities here on how you use the gyrocopters and how they synergize with the different units. Should be a lot of fun for instance, so maybe you forward deploy a whole bunch of rangers, and then you throw in some gyrocopters with brimstone guns so that if they're getting chased by cavalry, that cavalry now has to deal with these um, these brimstone guns peppering them, or a gyro bomber, for instance, peppering them, um, and they have to chase units that are doing damage to them from distance while being damaged by fast-moving flyers. It splits up their army, so again, just different ways you can think to synergize the gyrocopters. Get creative, have fun with it, hope this video was informative, if you, if you enjoyed this video, go up there, drop me a like. I guess if you're not a fan of gyrocopters, then that'll be you disliking the video. But if you did enjoy it, 
drop me a like. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. There'll be more videos. We can do more in-depth analysis. We'll have more battles, so stick around. Click the subscribe button. Click the bell so you'll be the first one to know about a new video. Hey, appreciate you being here. Air of Carthage signing out. I will be back with more soon.